Welcome to our student and alumni panel. My name is Chad Austin, and I am the Chief Enrollment Management Officer here at Yeshiva University. And I'll be the moderator today as we speak to some of our really great current students and distinguished alumni. We would love to be doing this in person, but because of the circumstances of COVID, we are having a virtual open house. We hope the information that you'll get from this panel will help you in guiding you and your families in deciding that Yeshiva University should be your destination for a college degree. We've invited a diverse assortment of our current and alumni students who will give you insight into their personal and profound experiences they've had here in their time at Yeshiva University. We are all on campus today for this virtual open house, but we are all in separate rooms to ensure the health and safety of all those participating today. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves, tell us where they're from, their current or their former major if they've graduated from Yeshiva, as well as their current status for our alumni students. Are they working? Are they in graduate school? And then to change things up, I'd love to know what your favorite food on campus was. So we're gonna to start today with Alana. Hi, my name is Alana Karp. Um, I am from Fairlawn, New Jersey. I am a current alumni, so I uh, majored in chemistry and biology and minored in art history. And I'm a current PhD student at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Hi, I'm Tali Greenberg and I'm from West Hempstead, New York. I graduated in May 2019 and I majored in computer science with a minor in political science. I'm currently a software engineer at Google and my favorite food on campus was the mozzarella sticks. Hi, I'm Becky Walden. I'm from Staten Island, New York. Um, I graduated in May 2019 and majored in accounting. I went to the master's program, the master's in tax at Sims also and graduated this September 2020, and I will be starting at Deloitte in January. My name is Tammy Pellet. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm currently in my first semester majoring in biology, and I would have to say my favorite food are the French fries. Hi, my name is Adina Passi. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm a senior majoring in biology. My name is Anya Smilovic. Um, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm currently studying in the CATS program. And my favorite food on campus, um, I have to agree, was the, the mozzarella sticks. They're, they're really good. Now, I would love to know why each of you selected Yeshiva University. Most college students today are applying to close to 12 different universities, but they decide on one. So why was your ultimate choice YU? Yes. So actually, after high school, I did not go straight to YU. It wasn't on my radar. I went to Hunter College for one year. And after one year of being there, I think I realized what I wanted in a college experience and I wanted a small, tight-knit community. Um, I missed learning the religious Jewish subjects that I wasn't getting at Hunter. And so I decided to switch and I really found what I was looking for, the community, the small classes and the Jewish environment was incredible. So um, attending a non-Jewish high school was like a really big obstacle for a lot of reasons. And I really wanted to go to a place where I never had to like validate myself or missing school for holidays or any of that. And then even more so after I did a year in Israel at Bar Ilan, I really like wanted to grow more religiously and be able to take more Jewish classes and no one else offered what why you offered. So once I found out about like how many opportunities there were here, I immediately wanted to come. It was crazy. Like one day I was just, I didn't even know what YU was. And then the next day I was enrolled and I was signing up for the cross country team. And um, I'm really grateful to for choosing YU. I chose YU to echo what a lot of other people are saying, because in high school, I was involved in a lot of extracurriculars and had leadership opportunities. And I felt that at YU, I'd be able to continue to grow those leadership skills with the opportunities for leadership on campus whether it's student council or being the president of a club, I didn't feel I'd have that opportunity elsewhere. And so I'm also grateful for the opportunity to develop those leadership skills at YU. I, in, in a similar vein, chose YU because of the smaller class sizes and getting to know the professors as well as the other students in my class. And I also, I play volleyball and I wanted to be able to continue that 
um, in the NCAA collegiate um, sphere, which is much more difficult than another school, as well as get involved in things like student government without having to worry about Shabbat, Hagim, um, and keeping kosher and anything like that. Okay. Tali, uh, you told me that you're currently a software engineer at Google. Can you walk us through your typical day? Sure. So my typical typical day is what it, it seems like, which is sitting at a computer and writing a lot of code. But I don't only sit at a computer. My day consists of a lot of meetings um, with my teammates to talk through different design processes um, and also a lot of downtime and having fun and talking about other things besides besides coding. Well, when you started at YU, was computer science uh, your chosen major? Was there a class you took that inspired you to change or identify which major you'd want to pursue? So when I got to YU, I had no idea what computer science was. I had no idea what I even wanted to major in. I decided to just take a bunch of intro classes and go from there. And thank God I chose intro to computer science because I instantly fell, fell in love. I didn't have any computer science background in high school. I just didn't have that opportunity. And then when I took intro to computer science, it introduced me to the world of computer science. And I realized that this is exactly what I want to do. That's great. And do you feel that the classes you took at why you prepared you for your current job at Google? Definitely. Um, Working in the industry is obviously different um, than anything you can learn in the classroom, but the classroom skills really provided me everything I need for a smooth transition to work in the industry. It also, my professors um, gave me the confidence to exceed in the interviews and also be confident that I have the skills to provide and give back to Google, which is something that I'm grateful for to this day. Did you utilize any of the services of career services, any like faculty advisement, academic advisement while you were here at YU that helped you to get to this place uh, in your professional career? The Career Center was a big help, but definitely my professor specifically really guided me through the application process and the interview process and eventually landing a software engineering role. A lot of my professors actually worked in the industry, so they helped prepare for what it would be like um, to interview and to actually work at the specific companies. And in general, um, they were always available to do mock interviews, which is extremely important when interviewing for software engineering roles and help with resumes and other things like that. Adina. Uh, we talk a lot about our career services and relating what students learn in the classroom to practical experience outside the classroom by way of internships. And I understand that your internship experience uh, is very unique. Can you share some information on that? Yes. Yeah, so um, I was talking to Dr. Babich about, um, who's the head of the bio biology department, about um, summer programs. And he said that um, usually your first semester is really, a, your first year is a great time to look for programs. Um, and so I actually got an internship with um, one of the local hospitals in Houston. And I was doing a lot of re clinical research actually about what I want to do, which is neurology. Um, and so because Dr. Babich helped me to look into that, um, I think it was, it's helpful for hopefully when I apply to medical school, I now have a great research experience under my belt. Um, I also have a great recommendation from all of these people who are so inclined to, to help me um, in the future. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Alana, you are a PhD student at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Tell us what you're studying and what you eventually want to do upon graduating and becoming Dr. Alana. Um, I am studying developmental and molecular biology. I study blood development in zebrafish, which are a lot of fun. Um, I, after I graduate, I hope to work in the biotech industry um, or in the pharmaceutical industry and continue uh, developing different uh, med biomedical technologies. Why zebrafish and not a clownfish, a pleco, a goldfish? So zebrafish are actually very cool. Um, they are actually, when they first, when the embryos first develop, they're actually see-through. So you can see into it and see how different parts of the body are developing. And they also uh, regenerate. So you can cut off 
different parts of their body and it will just grow back like it was before. So it makes it a lot easier to work with. Can you talk about what you told me about when you were applying to Einstein for your PhD studies? Um, you began to experience the 70,000 alumni and they helped you through the process. Can you just share that experience? So when I was applying to different schools, um, pretty much in every school I applied to, the interviews are very pretty small. They sometimes um, only interview 40 students. Um, so the current students get to see often the list of students they're interviewing, get a lot of interaction with the applying students. Um, and in all the schools that I interviewed, there were current YA students who reached out to me, saw I was on the list and asked me, um, do I need any help? Is there anything I they can do for me? Is there any questions they can answer? Um, and even after when I got into multiple places, uh, one of them reached out to me who I had never met before and said, I was also de deciding between a bunch of places. If you need someone to talk to, to go over your pros and cons list, I'm happy to listen, um, which was very, very helpful. And these were people you never met before? Your only commonality was a YU degree? For some of them, I had met before while I was in um, undergrad, but some of them I had never met before. And the only um, common, I don't even know if we overlapped at all. Uh, the only commonality was that I, we both attended YU. Wow, that's great. Anya, you took a different route when you came to YU and you started in our CATS program and pursued an associate's degree first. Can you talk about why you uh, decided to go that way and what the outcome was? Yeah, so I chose to do the CATS program because in high school I wasn't as academically inclined and I needed kind of like a like a push. So I chose the CATS program because it was like a little bit smaller. I really enjoyed it and it's given me a place where I could really be a leader. Uh, like I'm the president of the program now and I really get to learn a lot of different things and it's helped me like explore a lot of different career fields. It's, it's a business degree, but we're actually learning about like tons of different things. So I'm really excited that they gave me the skills to figure out what I want to pursue next. And you are also a proud member of our cross country team. Is that correct? Yes, I am. I really enjoyed cross country last year and next semester I'll be back on the team. I'm just recovering from an injury. Um, I really learned a huge sense of community being on the team. I finally got to be on a team where there was no obstacle and it was like I could fully be there because I would never have to miss school for the holiday and I never have to miss the meet for the holiday. So that was really fun and I really enjoyed it and working hard to achieve a common goal. It was a lot of fun. I really love it. Well, a refu ashlema to you. We can't wait to get you back on the track and running for YU. Can you talk about balancing being an NCAA athlete competing uh, uh, and representing Yeshiva University, but also balancing your Torah studies and your coursework uh, here at YU? I love that we are like required to take Jewish classes because it's like I always have two to three hours set aside at least twice a week for Jewish studies. So that's like really refreshing for me to know that I always have like Torah time set aside. Um, it was nice because cross country practice was actually in the morning. So I didn't have to like fit it into my day as much. I just had to go to sleep earlier. Uh, so that was really nice. It was pretty easy to balance it, thank God, because I just stayed really organized and I like why you helped because like they gave us a list of when all our meets were for cross country. So I knew like, okay, on these days I have to make sure I study in advance and stuff. And sometimes I'd have to like do my homework on the bus as we were going to the meet, but it's not that bad. I mean, you learn to multitask a lot, I guess. So Tammy, coming across the country and studying at Yeshiva University, coming from the West Coast, did you feel a sense of community, a collaboration uh, in your class work? Um, I definitely felt that way. I was nervous coming in because not that many people from my classes were people that I'd already known from Los Angeles. A lot of them were people from this coast. And I think from the beginning, people were really messaging one another. I felt comfortable completely in breakout rooms with messaging my fellow students, asking them how they're doing in the classes, ask them for help on certain assignments. And I think that that really showed me that it's not about competition. It's not about if someone else can do better than me. It's really about all of us taking our strengths and putting them together to just bring each other up. And I found that really exciting and really inviting in the community. So Alana, uh, any specific or you know foundational relationships or experiences you had with any of our professors here at YU? So there are actually two professors who I had a specific relationship with um, that stands out to me. In my first year on campus, I um, 
emailed Dr. Alyssa Shook and asked if I can um, do research in her lab. And having no research experience whatsoever, she took me anyway um, and taught me kind of the foundations of doing research. Um, and throughout my years, I used to walk into her lab or into her class, like after class, and ask her questions or ask her advice. Um, and I didn't take her class until my fourth year on campus, but I still maintained that relationship with her throughout my years. And she was incredibly helpful with me applying for, to even getting that background in for research and also like applying to graduate school. The other person I had um, a relationship with was Dr. Hyerap, who was my honors mentor, as well as um, my professor in many of my chemistry courses. Because the chemistry major is so small, I was actually the only graduating chemistry major my year. I had uh, advanced chemistry classes with two students with or with just me. Um, and she, regardless of how big or small the class was, she uh, made sure that I was still able to get those foundations in chemistry. Um, and she teaches the general chemistry course as well. So she was kind of a bookend to my um, undergraduate career for starting a general chemistry. Um, and then all the way through physical chemistry and quantum chemistry. Um, and she also um, wrote me fantastic letters of recommendation and was a foundation to me applying to graduate school and getting into ultimately getting into graduate school. Becky, how about the faculty in the Sci Sims School of Business? Any imba- impactful relationships, courses, faculty that you encountered? Yes. Yeah, so the faculty at Sims is really, really helpful from the advisors to the teachers. Um, some professors that I actually had really great relationships with, for example, Professor Bruce Kamens, I had him in undergrad for tax one and two, and then had him also for about three classes in the master's program. So I was really able to establish a relationship with him. And he was so helpful with any questions that any of us had regarding, you know, a career in tax or just any questions related to the CPA or things like that. Um, I also, one of my favorite classes in Sims was financial statement analysis taught by Professor Sidney Mel. I loved that class and he was also just so helpful. He helped me in my decision to pursue a master's degree and just um, exposed me to a few different areas of tax. It was more of like a forensic accounting class. It was really, really interesting and I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Anya. You spend Shabbos on campus frequently. Can you talk about your experience and how that was for you? Yes. Um, I was nervous my first Shabbat on campus because, you know, I was like far away from home and I don't really know. I only knew like two people. And so I convinced my friends to stay with me so I wouldn't be as, you know, like alone. And it was so fun because we were just like, let's just go and eat dinner with everyone. And we went in and everyone was so welcoming. Um, these girls who I didn't know any of them, they were like, come sit with us, come sit. And we sat with them. We talked with them for hours. We had so much fun. We like played games. And then we went to one of the rabbi's houses and we had like a whole own egg. It was so fun. And then uh, the next day, it just like kept continuing on like Shabbat day. We also just like walked around and went to different rabbis and stuff and And it was like a really nice way to get adapted and to like be sure that I loved it here as much as I do because everyone was just so welcoming and kind right away. And I love Shabbat on campus. And now that I'm not dorming, I miss it a lot. Adina, can you talk about some of the experiences and maybe the relationships you've had with your Torah studies faculty, maybe some of the Rebbeim, um, the Rebbitsons on campus and so forth? As an RA, I was given the opportunity to interact with the Bernsteins and the Rosenzweig. Um, the Bernsteins are the campus couple of the Baron campus. The Rosenzweigs are the Avenaim Bayit. Um, and so I chose to take one of um, Rebbitson Bernstein's classes because I'd already had a connection with her. And that class itself further emphasized how important she finds the connection with every student. Um, I think both the Bernsteins and the um, Rosenzweigs really care for all the students on the on campus and want to make it feel like such a community. Um, And so I really got the opportunity to learn with her, ask her my questions in class. She really valued the Chavruta time um, and made sure to walk around the class to help anyone out. Um, The teachers are there for you to learn. They don't care that you have to be tested on it. They want you to just learn the Torah um, and care about enriching your Torah life as opposed to just being there as a class. And that I found was so amazing that all of my Rebbeim and all of the Rebbitsons really cared about the Torah, not about this, the studies themselves. 
Ilana, it doesn't surprise me that since you're a PhD student right now that you were also an honors student here at YU. Can you talk about your experience as an honors student? Did it meet your expectations? Did you, did you feel that it prepared you to eventually get into graduate school? Um, I think the honors program is an amazing program. I had, I, I definitely appreciated many aspects of the program. Um, one of the things that I love so much about it is that as a student, you attend speakers and also cultural events. So we would, um, go to the ballet or Broadway shows, or we would go to different museums. They also brought in different speakers to prepare you for life skills, such as financial literacy or just general, um, how to network with people. And then they had just some interesting speakers in different topics. Um, another thing that we had is we had an honor thesis um, in which you did based on some research you did um, in your undergraduate career. And I think that was incredibly helpful for um, my future PhD because I had to, I was in a lab doing biomedical research and I had to learn how to take what I was learning and write it so that someone who is not necessarily an expert in the same field that I was doing would be able to read it and understand it, um, which is something that we have to do pretty much daily um, throughout our PhD. Um, so it was like the first stepping stone to those valuable skills that I now have in my PhD. That's great. Becky, after you graduated from YU, you told us that you went on to graduate school here in Sims. What did you study in graduate school? I did the Master's of Taxation. Okay. And what are you up to now? Um, I was supposed to be starting Deloitte in October, but due to COVID, they pushed it off till January. So until then, I'm actually studying for my CPA and getting ready to start my job in January which is very exciting. What sets YU apart from other universities that students may be considering? It was really incredible. The accounting leadership fair, I did that in my junior year, I believe, of Stern. Um, and I didn't even know that like YU offered that. I got to Stern and I decided to major in accounting after like my second semester. And junior year came around and everyone was doing this accounting leadership fair. I honestly didn't know what it was. And I decided to go um, do some recruitment, which is a little scary, but they really prepare you very well. Honestly, the career center is great. There's mock interviews, there's papers, everything. Like they tell you what to wear, like really prepare you for it. Um, and I went and f I got my leadership experience from Deloitte, which then led to a summer internship and now a full-time job. And I owe that all to YU. It's really crazy. And um, also in the master's program, for example, the professors are always asking us about our future and our jobs. And if someone doesn't have a job, like they help us out, they connect us to people on LinkedIn. And it's really such a small community. I've also found from working at Deloitte, when I got there, first when I got the offer, I got like 10 students from, 10 alumni, sorry, from why you call me congratulating me, asking if I had any questions, like from all different groups in Deloitte, not even just the group that I was working in. But when I got to my internship, there were at least five other YU students already working there. And it's just so nice to know that wherever you go, and I mean, I can only speak to the business world, but I know that it's definitely prevalent in all the other um, fields as well, that there's always going to be a YU presence there. And, you know, like I didn't feel alone. I felt like I had people there that could relate to me. You know, we took off the holidays together and things like that. And I really, I don't think that you can find that anywhere else. Tammy. Tell us something that you're most passionate about here at YU. Um, I think that's hard to choose. I'm gonna have to decide between volleyball and Model UN. I've been obsessed with them since high school. And I think when I was doing the whole decision process, I applied early because I knew that those were really pushed me forward because I think that having something outside of academics that your college helps you be passionate is really important because your life isn't only based on academics. And I think being able to be involved in a sport and being able to be involved in public speaking, which was always important to me, and being able to not have to compromise on that was really exciting. And can you talk to us about the classes you're taking this semester? Any favorites stand out to you? Yeah, I think my favorite class right now is the Honors Freshman Seminar with Dr. Peters. I think it was a really good introduction to the Honors Program as a whole because 
I was really nervous coming in because it is a high level program, but it really showed me that it's really collaborative. It's not competitive. Everyone's looking out for each other. She really structures her course for us to be united from the beginning. It's based on writing workshops with each other, discussions. And I think that that really is my favorite class because it gave me an insight into YU as a whole. Anya, this semester, the classes you're taking, anything that's really jumping out to you as a favorite thus far? Um, yes, my favorite class is definitely its intro to Judaism with Rabbi Hadjioff. Uh, it's a really amazing class because I do have like a, a good Jewish background, but like certain things I just never got to learn about from not going to Jewish school. So I'm part of the Machina program in Stern and it's really amazing for Jewish studies because they really start with like a lot of the basics, but they still teach you like really interesting things about it. So you're not just like getting bored or anything. And, um, I've only had two teachers in the Mechina program, Rabbi Hajiyaf and uh, Rabbi Zin Schechter, and they were both so far just such amazing, inspiring and impactful teachers. And it's amazing because they're not just there to teach you, they're also there to really like inspire you and they genuinely want you to like leave the class with something more. It's not just about getting an A or any of that. And they take it so much past the classroom. Like they're gonna start hosting us for Shabbat, Amir Tashem soon. Um, and before uh, Corona, of course, they had like tons of Shabbatones and so many fun events. And it was amazing to see how they worked through uh, COVID with all the events. They still had like different shirim on Zoom every week, every day even. So you never felt like you weren't getting the Torah experience with Stern. And I just love being part of the Mechina program because I've learned so much. But I've also gotten to meet a bunch of women from different backgrounds who have similar but different experiences to me and see people who just all desire the same thing. It's so beautiful and it's a great experience. Folks, is there any parting words you have for our future Maccabees that are listening in on today? One piece I would, of advice I would give to prospective students when you do choose to come on campus is to get involved early. At first, when I got, first got there, I was a little nervous about getting involved in all the different clubs and activities, but I regret not getting involved earlier because my closest group of friends that I made at Stern are from my extra, extracurricular activities, whether it be the computer science club or um, my student council at ONTAC. Those are my closest friends that I made at my college experience. I would also say just like enjoy every moment. Like it, it was literally such a great experience. I miss it so much now, like having graduated. So like just enjoy it while you're there. I would also say um, I was an art history minor um, and even though obviously I'm getting a PhD in science and I double majored in two different sciences, I clearly love science. But I think one of the best things to take advantage of is that there are so many departments with so many amazing, amazing professors and sometimes in things you would never expect to study. I admire it in our history because I took an intro class and I loved it. And it's something that, um, we're a liberal arts institution. You can take care, you can take advantage of so many different subjects and just learn things for the sake of learning or or get connected to things that you never would have imagined doing before um, starting um, your undergraduate career. I want to thank all of our student and alumni panelists today. The insight that you have shared are just prime examples of the richness of what we offer to students here at YU. And for them to give up several hours on a Sunday to talk to the next generation of Jewish leaders is truly a testament to the commitment that not only current students have, but our 70,000 and growing alumni network um, that they want to give back to the university. So I want to thank you again for tuning in. And we only hope that what you've heard today further piques your interest so that you or your sons or your daughters consider why you for their future home for a higher education. Thank you very much.